Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome everyone. I hope you're well. I'm your host, Ben Lively, and you're listening to Shake and Awake, episode number 66. And I wanted to thank you for tuning in with us today, wherever you are and whatever you're doing right this very moment. It means everything to me to share the messages that God has laid on my heart to share. And I want to give a special shout out to some new listeners in Kenya. Uh, no doubt how this podcast landed in their ears. Thanks be to God for moving the these messages to those that uh, that he wants to touch, and uh, what what beautiful people uh, the Kenyans are. Uh, they have a deep and uh, just uh, an awesome appreciation and love for God. Uh, if you ever see them, um, they are beyond excited and elated, and um, just. Uh, in in all of of the Savior when they when they um, worship Him, it's amazing just to watch them. At least for me, um, their 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 love for the Lord is um, just something to admire. Uh, so glad to have a few of them listening to the show. Hope it gets around. And um, as always, I promise you another great show. But more than anything, my hope for you today and always is that you have an actual encounter. With the Lord, not just another podcast. So a quick ask, if you have found value in these episodes, would you take 30 seconds after the show just to go and submit a quick review and a star rating in your app? And this is what potential listeners look for when deciding whether to give a show uh, a listen, which is confirmation from other great listeners like yourself that it can bring value to them. Would you do that for me if and only if you find value in these episodes. And for those of you that already have, I sincerely cannot thank you enough. And also spread the word. You know, just pass on the link to your friends or family or colleagues that the Lord prompts you to send to. There are so many people uh, that need to hear these messages and just the scripture. And God will see to it that it gets to them. You know, and then, and then he'll do the rest. So without further delay, let's get ready to invite God in with this right here, right now, and allow him to speak directly to our heart and mind. So we're going to uh, resume our series of parables today. And this one, I believe, is going to surprise many of you. Not because it's a parable you haven't heard before, but there's a few hidden meanings inside this parable. Uh, one or two inside the parable itself, and then one just after Jesus tells this parable to the crowd. I went my whole life not seeing it, but it was right there in front of my eyes the entire time. Does that sound familiar? So today's topic is on the three hidden messages in the parable of the sower. They all pertain to you. So many of you have known this to be the parable of the sower. I'm going to read it real quickly from one of three separate places in the Holy Bible that it's found and then provide you the hidden messages that are contained within it. At least they were hidden from me all these years and just until a couple weeks ago. I, I just, I need to share these with you. So this parable is found in, uh, and take your pick, Matthew 13, Matthew, uh, sorry, Mark 4, and also in Luke 8. And I'm going to use Mark chapter 4. Uh, I'm going to use that version. So Mark 4, 1 to 41. So the, the, and then we're going to break it down, and then I'm going to provide the hidden messages. The parable of the sower, verse uh, 1. And he began to teach beside the sea. Now, re- now, take special note of this. And a very large crowd gathered about him so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea. And the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. So there's so many people, and the crowd is so big, he's got to get into a boat and move back from shore to the sea so that more could gather and that he could be heard. Okay, verse 2. And he was teaching them many things in parables. And in his teaching, he said to them, listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured it. 
Other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil. And immediately it sprang up since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched. And since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no grain. And other seeds fell into good soil and produced grain, growing up and increasing and yielding 30-fold and 60-fold and a 100-fold. And he said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 10, and when he was alone, those around him with the 12 asked him about the parables. And he said to them, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those on the outside, everything is in parables so that they may indeed see, but not perceive and may indeed hear, but not understand, lest they should turn and be forgiven. Remember that. So we went from many to just a few in his disciples that needed to hear more. Verse 13, and he said to them, do you not understand the parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. And these are the ones along the path where the word is sown that when they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. The ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no root in themselves. But in, they endure for a, for a while. And then when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown among thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and, des and desires for other things enter in and choke the word. And it proves unfruitful. But those that were sown on the soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30-fold and 60-fold and 100-fold. So Jesus' explanation of the parable of the sower highlights four different responses to the gospel, okay? The seed is the word of the kingdom. It's, it's God. The hard ground res, uh, represents someone's hardened, uh, you know, who's hardened by sin. He hears, but he doesn't understand the word, and then Satan plucks the message away and keeping, you know, their, their heart dull and preventing the word from making an impression, the stony ground pictures a man who professes delight with the word. However, his heart is not changed. So when troubles arise, they rise every day for me, his so-called faith quickly disappears. And the thorny ground depicts one who seems to receive the word, but whose heart is full of riches, pleasures, lusts, right? The things of this world that takes his time and attention away from the word. And then he ends up having no time for it. Some of you are feeling a little conviction right now. And that's a good thing. I know I do. The good ground portrays the one who hears and understands and receives the word of God. And then allows the word to accomplish its result in their life. The man represented by the good ground is the only one of the four who is truly saved because salvation's proof is fruit. Matthew 3, 7 to 8 and Matthew 7, 15 to 20 will go on if you go ahead, if you choose to read that. That's the only one of the four who is truly saved because salvation's proof is fruit. To summarize the point of the parable of the sower, a man's uh, uh, receiving and response to God's word is determined by the condition of their heart. 
And a secondary lesson would be salvation is more than a you know superficial, although you know joyful hearing of the gospel. Someone who is truly saved will go on to prove it. So may our faith and our lives exemplify the good soil in the parable of the sower. So now you ask, so what are the what are the three hidden messages within this parable? You're saying, you know, I I understand it all pretty well just as it's written, and to you I say of course. And that's what I believed it as well. But here they are. Remember that large crowd that was so big that Jesus and his disciples had to get in the water in a boat so that they could have room to speak so everyone could hear? Just just hold on to that thought. Remember this for the hidden message. The sower is God. He sows the word in verse uh, 14. We are not the seed. See, I thought we were the seed. And what happened to us and what we did produced or didn't. No, the Holy Spirit is the seed. The seed is the same no matter what the soil. Those four examples in Jesus' parable, the seed is the same. We can just, let's just make it a mustard seed. It's the same seed. It's the soil that we are or that we become. There's no different Holy Spirit being indwelled within us, but there are many types of soil. You, I, everyone else that hears God's word. That what we do affects how that seed grows. We, you, are the soil. It's what kind of soil are we? Not the seed. Notice how and here's, here's another hidden message. Notice how little the crowd got after Jesus was done speaking the parable. It says just those around him along with the 12. Remember, they were in a boat. There's huge, gigantic crowds. Those are the ones he wants to capture and impact with his parables. You see, without Jesus explaining the parable... Even the 12 disciples couldn't understand. And that's why they asked Jesus. Nor did those around them. Not the entire gigantic crowd. So those, those few, were, they were so hungry to hear the word and the meaning of Jesus' parables. They thirsted for more knowledge. Just like the 12 disciples did. The rest of the crowd, they went away. They dispersed. And they never received the full meaning of the parables. They were, and to this day, are incapable, incapable of understanding without the wisdom and understanding that only the Holy Spirit can provide us. This is why the Holy Spirit is also referred to us as our helper, and that was by Jesus himself. He is the one. He's the only one that helps us understand the meaning and the words of God. Not us. Not our wisdom or understanding. We, you and I, we are incapable on our own. So this is why it's so important for us to evangelize and tell others about the gospel and of God's word. For they too become soil. When that seed is sown. You know, I've said a million times in my life, and I'll likely say it a million more. It's not what you know that matters. It's what you do with what you know that matters. What are you doing? Which type of soil are you? Which type of soil have you become today? Think. Think. It's between you and God in the end. I'll have to answer and account to God one day soon as well. What did I produce from the seed that was sown in me? Which type of soil did I be, decide to become and what did I produce or not? How about you? 
So before we end today's show, I just want to thank you all again for tuning in. I hope you were touched by today's message in scripture. If you'd like to reach out to me, please call me directly at 407 493 3208. Email me at ben at shaken awake.com or check out the show at shaken awake.com. Until next time, take great care of yourselves and each other, and God bless you all. 